from Pawtucket Medical Associates here on Haverhill Community Television on a program called Matters of the Heart. We bring contemporary issues that are in the news about heart and medical issues with our cardiology perspective. And I'm here today with my associate, Dr. Sunny Srivastava, for uh, an uh, ep uh, issue which comes up every few years about the topic of eggs. <laughs> What's the story with eggs? Should I eat them, Doc, or shouldn't I? Yeah, it's a good question, and it's a question I think I've been asked innumerable times over the last several years in practice, and you know, it's been a mainstay of people's diet forever, but we've been taught to not eat eggs so that you can lower your cholesterol and thus improve your heart health. Um, and most recently in the news, there's been a lot of press swinging the other way, saying, well, hold on here, eggs aren't perhaps so bad, and in fact, maybe they're actually pretty good for you too, and we can go into all that shortly. And so. I guess the question is, why did eggs become so controversial in the first place? Why did we assume or why have we been taught or why do we think that eggs are so bad for you? And it all has to do with cholesterol. And a large egg, typical egg you buy at the grocery store, contains between 180 and 190 milligrams of cholesterol. And so the assumption has been made that you eat more eggs, you are taking in more cholesterol, it's gonna raise your blood cholesterol levels, thus lead to more blockages in the arteries of the heart, heart attack, stroke. The American, like, like many things in medicine, that's a very logical and reasonable, legitimate concern. Right. But let's back it up. Yeah, so, well, and I would also add to that statement that the American Heart Association for years recommended that one not exceed 300 milligrams of cholesterol in a day. So you eat two eggs, you're already well over your daily limit, and so, Eggs really got a bad name for years and years and years um, with regards to, to dietary intake. Um, so there is a problem with the AHA's recommendation and our fear of eggs. And really, it is based on an assumption that, as you just said, as you eat more cholesterol, your blood cholesterol levels are going to go up. Right. And so if that's true, then it's a legitimate concern. Right. And you would assume that in the other way, that you eat fewer eggs, cholesterol goes down. Um, and we've learned that your body doesn't work that way, and that's not how it is. And so I guess one way of, uh, of looking at this is talking about something called set points. And essentially, all of our bodies make cholesterol on a daily basis. We have to. You need cholesterol for lots of biological processes to take place. And every day, we produce between one and two grams of cholesterol. That's our body doing that. Well, so the early use, we were talking about milligrams, so let's match those up. So our body makes between 1,000 and 2,000 2, milligrams right. of cholesterol per point. day. Yep. So, um, and as you eat more dietary cholesterol, your body actually will change its set point and produce less of it, interestingly. It's like, and the body does this with a lot of other systems. The thyroid acts like this, steroids in the body act like this. If, uh, you know, baseball players taking steroids, the body starts to stop making them on its own. Uh, and so, so the body does this with a lot of different things. So for example, if you um, eat more cholesterol, your body produces less of it, and vice versa. If you are eating less cholesterol, your body actually starts to produce more. Um, that's because of this set point. And so what we've really learned is that, the reality is that diet probably has very little influence on where your cholesterol goes. It's more about what your genetic set point is and what your biology is. And so a lot of the articles in, in the press recently have been really focusing on this. And, um, and I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of patients coming in talking about, well, what's the deal with cholesterol and, 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 uh, and eggs now? I mean, have you been faced with a lot of those kind of yes, questions? Yes, yes. But let me make it, I think, just to summarize what you said to make it plain for our audience. You told us that, that the body makes, say, about 2,000 milligrams of cholesterol per day to do all the important functions, like to line our cells, the cell membrane, you need cholesterol. Right. To make important hormones like estrogen and testosterone, you need cholesterol. Yep. So it, the body's doing this important work. If I eat two eggs, you told me that would be around 360 milligrams of cholesterol in those two eggs. So if I eat those 360 milligrams of cholesterol, my body won't make 2,000, it will make less. It'll mainly be only 1,600, for instance. Over time, right. Okay. Absolutely, yeah, your body will change over time. So, yeah, so, 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 it, so it doesn't add to the how much cholesterol, therefore add to risk. That's right. the basic That's actually a very concept. good way of putting it, yeah, okay. absolutely. So, and, and you pointed out many of the processes that rely upon cholesterol. So an extreme diet of no cholesterol whatsoever is not good either because it is you know, brain cell function, cell membranes, 
various steroids, hormones, et cetera, it's very, very important. So we need to have cholesterol. Um, so then why is it then we've been told for years and years and years to avoid eggs? You know, I, I can remember 10 years ago or nine years ago starting up in practice and really talking to people about cutting back on their egg consumption and things mm -hmm. like that. And, um, and now we don't have those conversations really as much right. anymore. But um, I think a lot of it is based on this old assumption and paranoia that dietary cholesterol in an egg yolk, because that's what it really is, will raise your cholesterol and thus increase your risk of heart disease. And it's been very hard to undo, I think this is the majority of it, it's very hard to undo old ingrained habits and what you've learned for years and years sure. and years. I think it's hard to break that down. Um, I think that's the main reason why we, we, many people still avoid eggs and such. Yes. Um, One comment I would make, though, about dietary issues, I know this from my, my personal health, but also from my counseling of patients, is, is that anytime you sort of, you just comment on how the body adjusts to how much cholesterol manufactures by the dietary intake, there's also the other dynamic thing that changes when we eat different things. So if you aren't eating cholesterol, if you aren't eating eggs, what might you be eating? Or opposite, if you're eating eggs, what aren't you eating? So for instance, we now have an increasing recognition that a lot of carbohydrates, flour-based products that are a staple of many people's breakfasts, like bagels, muffins, donuts, are actually quite bad for you. So perhaps if we ate eggs right. and we didn't eat those other things, we actually would be much better off than the theoretical hazard that's now being no, disproven. No, that's absolutely true. And so eggs, we'll talk about more of what eggs have in it, but there's so much stuff in there that is good for you. Um, one of which is in the, in, the, in the egg white, a fair amount of protein, which promotes satiety and that you're not going to eat as much in, in there because protein fills you more. Um, but no, absolutely, that's a great point. Because um, if you're not eating the eggs, you're eating something else. And I, I can remember very vividly back in, I'd say, even college, people talking about bagels as a healthy food. Uh -huh. and, and people were flocking to bagels for, in gigantic, big, puffy uh -huh. bagels, probably... I don't know how many, you know, five, six hundred calories for the bagel, and then people are slobbering cream cheese all over it, and thought that was healthier than even a donut, for example. Wow. Um, I think we've come a long way from, from that thought process. Sure. Um, and so there have been studies looking at hundreds of thousands of people, and they've all suggested that consuming eggs on a daily basis is not associated with increased blood cholesterol levels or increased cardiac events. There's some rare, rare exceptions, which are probably beyond the scope of this discussion. There's a very rare genetic condition called familial hypercholesterolemia, where this group of patients make tremendous amounts of cholesterol in the body, and it's largely thought by endocrinologists and doctors who specialize in cholesterol that you should just not, you really do need to avoid dietary cholesterol in those folks, because their bodies just keep producing cholesterol no matter what. And so that's one but those people only make up a few percent of the population. Not even. And so actually, I looked at this, it's 0.2%. Okay. So it's, it's a very small amount of people. Um, Just for our audience at home, you're, the uh, people listening at home are probably not familiar with hypercholesterolemia patients, largely, with, right. just so that everyone can't assume that they they're have that. Yeah, problem. I mean, not, in our whole practice, we probably just have a handful of them right. uh, in the whole practice of thousands and thousands of people. So, um, And so, you know, in talking about these clinical trials, their clinical trials was really actually randomized trials, which are good clinical trials, where one group was assigned to eating three eggs a day, which, you know, it's a decent amount of eggs, and the other group, no eggs. Um, and actually, a lot of good things happened to the eggs group. Um, first of all, there was really no change, and in fact, in some instances, improved cholesterol levels. Um, but there were decreased, uh, and you can check in blood tests, markers of inflammation, those are all decreased. People lost weight. Um, and these people were eating between five and 600 milligrams of cholesterol just from their eggs uh -huh. uh, by eating three eggs a day. And so, um, so that was a- But presumably from what we now know, those people did what you said. They, they cut back, their body reacted to that and cut back and so their levels of cholesterol stayed the same. Right, so instead of eating, right, well that certainly too. And now also perhaps, and I'm just guess speculating here, but perhaps instead of eating a bowl of Fruit rice, Loops. Yeah, or, yeah <laughs> I was gonna say a, a cereal that people think is healthy, a Special K for example. Uh -huh. People think it's a diet cereal, so it's got to be healthy, but it's, it's a lot of sugar, a lot of carbohydrate in there. Um, so instead of eating that, they're eating some eggs. Right. So there's certainly benefits to that. Um, so the bottom line is, I guess, that with that, is that unless you have this rare familial hypercholesterolemia uh, disorder, eating a few eggs per day is, is actually not just not bad for you, but probably good for you too. And I think the more important thing is also, though, with diets, 
to avoid an extreme in anything. You know, uh, you know, don't eat three to six eggs every day all the time. You know, vary it up, mix it up. Just like you know, want to avoid any other food. You know, don't eat, don't avoid carbohydrates 100%. You need some. Um, don't avoid fat 100%. You need some fat. You need a, a balanced diet basically, okay. uh, avoiding the fads. And, and I mentioned briefly as we're starting to run out of time here about um, eggs and what's in them and the health of eggs. And there's a lot of good stuff in there. So. The yolk is a very nutrient dense, um, very antioxidant rich and vitamin laden food. It's actually probably one of the most nutrient dense foods that we have available to us. The whites, the egg whites, is really just protein and water for the most part. Mix it all together in a scrambled egg, that's a lot of good stuff. But there's a lot of people who avoid the yolks uh, and just stick with pro the, 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 the whites. But anyways, the yolk contains a fair amount of calcium iron, zinc, thiamine, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, a lot of good stuff in there. Um, there are vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, uh, and then there are the omega-3 fatty acids. So a lot of good stuff packed into that little yolk. Um, there's some other things in there that theoretically have been thought to be good. Um, choline, lutein, zeaxanthine, these are antioxidants and um, thought to maybe perhaps decrease inflammation. We don't know as much about those types of agents as we do some of the other things, but there, it's in there as well. Um, and so eating a whole egg, uh, there's a lot there uh, that's good for you. Just for, for, since we're on the topic of eggs, this is a topic uh, that I'm going to, a question I'm going to ask you that's unfortunately difficult, <laughs> but it highlights a challenge that we have as physicians to sort of keep up with good nutritional counseling. What do you say to patients about other aspects of eggs that come up? Free-range chickens, mm -hmm. organic Omega enriched, grain fed, grass fed. I mean, how do we counsel right. patients on any of these things? What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, certainly there's a financial side of that too, that some of these products you're alluding to are much more expensive. Um, you know, there's a taste difference in some of these things. That's one component of it. If you're looking for the health side of things, I think there's been some evidence that suggests that some of these free range, for example, or grass fed beef, and things like that, might be more enriched with some of these omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants. I don't know if I could, you know, whenever I'm prescribing a medication to somebody, or rec I'd like to be able to tell them that I have proof that me giving you this pill with these side effects is going to benefit you. I don't know if I have that proof, and I may not be caught up to the latest and greatest in every bit of research on the matter, but I don't know if I have that proof yet. Do you know of that type of proof? No, I don't. I, yeah. I, I was just highlighting uh, yeah. challenges that we do have when patients ask these questions. We don't really have, and I feel the same way. And I think yeah. patients are sometimes disappointed that we don't have definitive ev yeah. evidence. And it's not that we lack the knowledge. I think it just doesn't exist. I mean, I find it is interesting. I find, you know, so with my kids, I'll do, you know, I'll take a, just a regular conventional egg, crack it into a, a white bowl. And then we happen to have some of these, you know, uh, you know, K, you know free range, cage-free, organic, they can crack that one into a bowl, and the color difference in the yolk is tremendous. Now, I don't know what that means, uh -huh. but it is a very different appearing uh -huh. difference in, in the right. appearance Right, something that, that could be as simple as, as age, too, maybe. There, there could may be. be age differences. Right, in, been sitting in the, for a while, right. so who knows, but uh, it was a striking difference. Uh -huh. uh, and then cook, cooking them both separately uh -huh. as a little taste test. Uh -huh. And it may be just an age, uh, uh, the egg's been sitting around longer, who knows, but right. uh, the kids could definitely see the, the, the color and the taste that being a little different. Okay. So. so give us some final points for our audience in our last minute of what we should know about eggs. Should I avoid them or should I just reckless abandon, uh, eat eggs, egg, eggs for breakfast, egg salad for lunch, and an omelet for dinner? Is that a good No, good so you should do neither one of those. Okay. Like anything in diet, <laughs> yes. the extremes are not good. Okay. So, but I will say this, that the fear of eggs is probably a, mis, a misguided fear that we've had for years and years and years. And in fact, Eggs are actually not just not bad for you, but they're probably good for you as well. And so everything in moderation, eggs in moderation, uh, a couple of eggs per day would be fine. But again, you know, mix it up a couple times a week maybe. Um, I've definitely over the last several years tried to eat more eggs. Um, but I don't, go, I, I don't go overboard and try to do it every day. But, um, right. 
but uh, I think it's a good addition to one's diet. Sure, and I think that the other potential benefits that come from potentially displacing something that may be less healthy is also something that would be a secondary gain if you're not eating a donut. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the versatility of them eating, the way you can prepare them is fantastic. But of course, we want to caution that we should avoid other things with the eggs that may not be healthy. And so that will be, right. I think, our final word. Uh, thank you, Dr. Srivastava, for reviewing eggs and the state of the art of eggs. We're free to eat them. Uh, we, should, we can enjoy them as a healthy alternative and a good addition to our diet. Until next time, I'm Seth Belazarian. Thanks for joining us on Matters of the Heart.